Hello, this is Matt from Unbearable73, and I, in this video I thought I'd share with you my five favorite books and, and kind of why they are. This is not going to be a book review of each of those books. It's just going to be kind of why they are in a general sort of summary. I plan on doing reviews of all of those books and others as time passes that are more in-depth. So let's get started with this. I'm going to call up a browser here with some Wikipedia links so people can see what I'm referencing. And we'll go with the number one. Uh, my obvious most favorite book is The Lord of the Rings. Um, I'm in the Lord of the Rings one book school. Some people will say it's three books. It was written as one book, intended as one book. It was only split into three books because the publisher at the time did not weren't sure that it could, uh, it was publishable because fantasy wasn't maybe that a big a thing in publishing. You know. So why is Lord of the Rings my favorite book? Well, I've read it over 150 times. Um, now, most of that was when I was from like 4 through 21 or so. I probably go over 120 times. And nowadays, I tend to read it once a year, maybe twice a year, depending on, you know, my mood. And I gain something new from it each time, which is how much depth Tolkien put in it. But why is this my favorite book? Well, when I was a kid, I'm not going to go into all the details of my troubled childhood, as we would say. But at one point, one point, so one of the adults had to punish me by locking me in a room for a quiet time, away from my toys and whatnot. They, and, they, and they apparently didn't know I had become interested in books, and there were a lot of books on the shelves in there. And the one that caught my attention was The Fellowship of the Ring. For some reason, I, I, that one just clicked on me. And I had been, even at four, thanks to my grandmother, largely, and my aunt uh, Michelle, uh, my mother a little bit too, uh, my cousin Mary and my Aunt Lena, they had really emphasized me on reading and math skills. So by the time I was four, I was reading at an adult level and doing like, you know, multiplication, addition, subtraction, third, fourth grade math. So I remember pulling down The Lord of the Rings, seeing the cover. Um, I, can, I never able to find the exact cover of the book then. Uh, it's, I can dimly remember, and maybe in my review I will dig it up and, and if I can find that edition of it. It was a paperback, it was very well warm, plus uh, quite a few members of my family kind of read fantasy and sci-fi. My grandmother especially, I don't know if she, I don't honestly remember if she ever was a big fan of Lord of the Rings, per se, but she got me into science fiction and horror. Um, I will be doing a review of a movie called Acts with the Fight of Eagle just in, uh, for my grandmother's birthday as a tribute to her. Because uh, uh, that I, I remember that, but I'll, that's a story for another day. So I read this book then, and I was fascinated by it. Uh, I I think I went through the whole three books, uh, Lord, well the three the three books in one novel, Lord of the Rings, probably within a week. Read it again, 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 and then I found out to do other other stuff like The Hobbit and The Silmarillion, uh, Farmer Giles of Kent. Uh, a lot of his letters over the years have obviously expanded more, but the Lord of the Rings obviously was the signature thing at the time that was my sort of relief from a lot of stress going on, the fantasy of it, but but also the depth of it that someone could it got me. I got, I got to Norse mythology through the, through Lord of the Rings and Tolkien's work. Uh, found that it was a proto-Germanic mythology, you know, and it just expanded from there. Uh, and this book. For a long time, when I was kind of going through more serious issues, I'd go, re go back to reading The Lord of the Rings just to remind me of th the escape of it, you know. So that's why Lord of the Rings is my favorite book. Uh, now, the next books after this, five, the five after this, aren't necessarily in any particular order. Um, two, of, uh, two of them are off the same bookshelf, by the way, that I found The Lord of the Rings on. But... Um, the, so I'm just going to give the other four. So Dune was also on that shelf. Uh, I actually have the copy of Dune in that picture. I have, at one point I had like seven copies of this book because so many of my relatives had read it. Uh, they were all like hippies in the psychedelic 70s and Dune for whatever reason was in, so to speak. Um, I don't know, that's the best way to put it. So uh, I don't... I only keep copies of books now that have signature means, like I said, like a, a, a memorable to me. I have the two copies of the Silmarillion that my uncle, who passed away, who was very, after my grandmother, who was very influential on me in terms of hobbies, 
He's my Aunt Michelle's husband, uh, Joe Sweeney. Uh, he's passed away quite a few years now. And Dune, what was Dune? Well, Dune was the first science fiction novel I ever read, obviously. And even as a little kid, I kind of found it fascinating because I, I re having read a couple of fantasy books, there was some other stuff on the shelf that I maybe I'll mention another day. Uh, I saw the medieval setting of it, and I started to think, this is what first got me thinking about communications in space and how real-time communications are what make, one of the things that make our ability to have governments that span continents and the planet in some cases, and as well as corporations and trade groups and whatever. It, 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 real-time trans, transport and real-time communications are very critical. If you, if you don't have both of those, you can't have a real, a, 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 an effective central government like we have, um, regardless of your, cho your, cho your beliefs about the effectiveness or how the government should be. You can't deny that modern governments are very effective, especially those that are more uh, republic style with democracy built in, you know. And but you need commu instant almost instantaneous communications and almost instantaneous transport, meaning. Not that it can take a couple of hours, but it could happen within real time so much. So if you order a product and be there the next day, not if you were living on Mars, it would take three years to get to you. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, that was fascinating about Dune. And also the, the, uh, later on, uh, as I read more and read to Frank Herbert's work, another fascinating concept from Dune, which I'll cover in the review of it in a few months, uh, probably a month or two, uh, is... Uh, Herbert's concept uh, that he gave Paul of prescience, meaning how, and Asimov dealt with this a lot with his in his foundation uh, with the psychohistory that the uh, more intelligent people really know that and we have and to an extent there's behavioral psychology you know evolutionary psychology that people are noticing that and, and Nietzsche noticed this over a hundred years ago people be behave in a herd like way we we have they're very predictable and that's a strong element of doing this how predictable people were and the path Paul was forced on because of that predictability and how he tried to avoid it. So let's move on to the next one. The Elf Stones of Schnarr. Uh, now this this book I got uh, from my uh, my Uncle Joe Sweeney when he they were downsizing some books uh, when he and my aunt moved in together they had duplicates and plus I think he had upgraded some, some hard, hard covers. I got the paperback version of The Sword of Schnarr. He had a hardcover of it. So I read the Sword of Shinar and liked it. It was good. And then a couple of years later, uh, I think it was like five or six years, because Sword, Sword of Shinar was like 75, I remember it. The Yellowstone came out. And I was like, oh, that's Shinar. That's that Brooks guy. That's how I remembered it. And uh, we, we both read it and we talked about it. And this is I, that's the edition you see there is uh, I have that edition, but the science fiction book club version. Which is smaller? They look, they run this size. Like the normal he paper well, hardbacks are like maybe this much bigger and whatever. Else. But this this is the size of the science fiction book club uh, mentioned. I'll, this book comes up in a few seconds. And one of the Elsa uh I was a little older when I first hit it, and the reason that compared to almost all his other work really sticks with me and why I reread it every, at least every couple of years is the two characters, there are three main characters, well, let me, let me be careful about that. There are four main characters you would say in this book. Uh, there's Will Elmsford, uh, Amberly, Elessendil, I can't pronounce the, their name correctly, the name of the Elven King family, uh, Arishia, and Alanon. Now, the the three here, uh, those of you who read it, know go on a journey together. And these two, uh, Will and Amberly, have the struggle they go through in this really resonated with me because I had been, even at the age of eight, I had been through some desperate things already, the, the need to survive and push through. And it just re resonated that they were, you know, they were able to pull together with each other that. And even in the face of the sacrifices they had to face, they 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 they, they kind of like if you those of you who've seen Naruto and uh, his Nindo and Jiraiya's Nindo 
the will to endure, to do, you know, to overcome in the face of death even. That still resonates with me because I have, I, especially now as I, I've been dealing with health problems for the past 10 or 15 years, you know, I'm over a year free now of the last incident of my health problems. And uh, to endure those, that, that's what this book, when I think of this book, I think of endurance, the will to endure, the drive to be able to get to the, the next stage of your life. I, that, I think of that. So Lord of the Rings is, is sort of, my, I think of the escape and the freedom. Dune about you know how society works. Elfstones is endurance and struggle, the struggle to survive. You know? So let's go to the next one, which I held up here. This is Hellspark by Janet Kagan. She has only written three books. Uh, she wrote this, obviously, which is a totally independent science fiction novel. She wrote a Star Trek tie-in. And she wrote another book, which I think, which is really a novella with some short stories. Uh, I, I do link to her Amazon page down below if you want to support me and get any of these books. Um, she's passed away by now. Um, I, I, she wrote a lot of short stories, though. So if you if you like Hellspark or Hellspark, the better way to pronounce it in the book. I'll mention that in the review I do next week. Uh, you. <laughs> you did a lot of stuff you can read by her that are short stories. And the Star Trek novel, Horror Song, if I remember correctly, is also a pretty good Star Trek tie-in novel. Uh, so what does this book mean to me? Well, I think I read this book when I was about nine the first time, maybe ten. And I had only, I had been more of a fantasy and horror type reader with a little bit of science fiction with basically, which, which really the classic science fiction you know, Dune, Frank Herbert stuff, uh, Isaac Asimov, A. E. Van Vogt, Van Vogt, V O G T. Uh, you know, about a couple older science fictional who wrote in this the what you call called the classic period, where, and so this book came up, and I was like, oh, that looks interesting. It's it's about uh you know a, a traveler and a supercomputer and you know the, the science fiction book. I had a review of it at the time. And I'll give that a shot. You know. And it, I had begun getting into computers and science when I was about six. So I, I, even then, I wanted to know how the world worked and I could try to help deal with my problems. And this book deals especially with the nature of sapiens. What does it mean to be aware, thinking, capable, free will? Um, that's a big theme of this book. And I'm not going to spoil it, and I'm not going to do the full review. So as much as I struggle with being human because of the mental illness issues and, and inflictions upon me, this book was something that, that gave me a focus on what it means to be human versus an enemy. And that stuck with me. It's one of the reasons I reread it. So well, the last one, and this is a pure fun read. It was on the same bookshelf. Uh, I actually had three or four copies of this. It was on the same bookshelf that The Lord of the Rings and Hobbit and Dune and all, a couple of the books were on. Um, that was the first copy of this I got. And then my uncle gave me a second copy of this, which is the book right there. He gave me his, he, I guess, not, didn't want to read anymore, but I got his hardcover from Science Fiction Book Club. And uh, it's a fun read. There's a whole series after this where you don't, there, don't ever, he, he wrote this book in, the 70s, and all the sequels came out like over a decade later, which is really good. It's, it has a little tongue-in-cheek humor. Um, it's kind of like Piers Anthony's Zant books, but not as humorous. There's a serious story with elements of humor that pop up. Okay. And it's basically about the dragon and the George. And the... Uh, <clears throat> I don't know how to put it without going to a full review. Someone get is engaged in a telepathy experiment that gets projected. If you, those of you who know fan fiction know what a self-insert is, this is a prototypical self-insert unintentionally of oneself from our world into another world. That's the, probably the best way to put it. A human gets put into the body of a dragon. He's the dragon. And who's the George? Well, is the George the guy in the head that, who's inserted? Is the George the person he goes to rescue? Is the George the woman standing on his back? Is the George the, the knight in front of him? Who is Sir Brian Neville Smythe? Um, who knows? But it's a, it's a great novel and it's a fun read and it's a it, it it's when I think of the 
of a book to read just for the fun of it that's high quality, I think of The Dragon and the George by Gordon R. Dickinson, who, Dickinson, who is known for science fiction more than fantasy, but this is an excellent series. So those are my five favorite books. There's a couple of other honorable mentions, like uh, uh, the, A Stainless Steel Rat is one by Harry Harrison, uh, Dracula, uh, Red Storm Rising by Tom, Tom Clancy, uh, there's probably a couple other men, like seven or eight books I could say that hover right around that level of number five, but these are the five. So what do you think about my five, five favorite books? What are your favorite books and why? Uh, comment down below. Give me a like if you like it. Give me a dislike if you don't. Subscribe if you're interested in my content. Um, I am Matt. This is Unbearable73. Have a nice day, and I am out of here.